Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I too thank the panel. You've had a long day. Uh, during my short time on this committee, there have been countless hearings on the President's health care law. Just last spring, the committee had the opportunity to question Secretary Sebelius about the progress of the law, and she informed us that everything was proceeding according to schedule. Then in July, of course, the President decided to delay enforcement of the employer mandate until 2015. This was a surprising but welcome retreat. I think the witnesses here today have demonstrated this. Uh, this delay, unfortunately, is only a temporary relief for employees and employers. This fall, employers will have to make a very difficult decision regarding the health care coverage and full-time status of their employees, and these decisions will ultimately hurt employees, not employers. I have a letter here from a Kansan, John Rolfe, who operates 64 restaurants across the Midwest and several in my congressional district, and I'd request, Mr. Chairman, that this letter be entered into the record. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. Rolf here, whose uh, restaurants employ hundreds of people, he has made a good faith effort in the past to provide all employees with a modest health insurance plan and will continue this effort by complying with the employer mandate in 2015. Additionally, he has made the decision not to cut his employees' hours below the 30 in order to avoid the mandate. This means that he will continue to offer health care coverage for those folks, even though it will be more, than, more expensive than his old plans that were canceled. This is nothing short of admirable and is representative of the strong relationships that many employers and employees share all over the nation. However, Mr. Rolf worries that the 30-hour definition for, for full-time employees could have adverse consequences for companies in this situation. Because his employees tend to work more than 30 hours a week and are offered a health plan, their options are either to take this more expensive health plan or search for a plan on healthcare.gov where they will no longer be eligible for a subsidy. Mr. Rolf worries that many of these employees will actually request to work fewer than 30 hours a week so that they will not be offered health insurance by the company and can obtain subsidies over the exchange. And I doubt these are the outcomes the President envisioned when he put pen to paper on this law. But the sad reality is his health care law will encourage many Americans to be only part-time employees, which will make it increasingly difficult for many of them to achieve the American dream. Mr. Anastos, I feel that your testimony uh, really reflected the comments of Mr. Rolfe and others uh, of my constituency. As somebody in the hospitality industry, do you uh, have comments uh, regarding how true uh, this letter is? Uh, yes, Congresswoman. Uh, I, that letter is right on the money. I think Congressman Reed had similar comments uh, that I thought were right on the money. And, you know, a couple of things about it. it to me, it's almost hurts the I, – I have to look at it from the employer's side, but um, like I said, I mean, I've worked on factory floors and that sort of thing for many years, and I actually think it – I truly think it hurts the worker more than it hurts us, because they're the ones who are going to – with a they're going to be have their hours knocked down by a significant amount. And secondly, that whole idea about the relationship between us small employers or even large employers and our employees – it just creates this wedge and uh, division that is just totally unnecessary. And um, it, it's, it's, I, I just certainly reemphasize everything that that gentleman said. Mr. Chen, would you care to comment on uh, if you agree that this provision will uh, disproportionately hurt the employee? There's no question that the biggest loser from this is the employee, particularly the vulnerable population we've talked about today that we look at in our research and others have looked at as well. Um, you're talking about millions of Americans who will be adversely impacted because the incentives created by the law, frankly, are perverse. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chairman.